Hi, shalom, friends. Uh, together, perhaps we could figure out something perplexing in human behavior. I'm referring to the following. Um, you're working, and your employer calls you into the office, and he says, uh, Jack, uh, I have a project uh, all of us are working on. I need you to put a little bit extra time and effort into it, and I'm counting on you. And you're thinking to yourself, uh, you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, and after all, during the weekend, you wanted to go golfing. So your face uh, sort of reflects your inner feelings. The boss says, I know you're not too happy about it, but we need it. So don't forget, it's due on Monday. And you leave. Happens quite often. Well, for that matter, a teacher comes into uh, to the class, gives a lesson, and then puts down a homework assignment. Even if there's a groan or a sigh, the teacher still gives the, the homework assignment. It would seem in both cases what the person giving the task is interested in the result. The employer needs a result. The teacher needs a result. Your attitude is not crucial. It might be a factor, but it's certainly not primary. Yet, if you look at another aspect of human, human behavior, Father says to his uh, son, he says, son, outside uh, it's, it's overgrown with weeds and uh, I want you to do the lawn and make it tidy up the outside. And the kid says, yeah, okay, okay, I'll do it. And when he leaves the room, he slams the door to do the job. The d dad gets upset. Or <laughs> a very common case, Husband comes home, wife prepares dinner. At the end of dinner, the wife says to her husband, she says, you know, I'm really tired today. Uh, perhaps he could do the dishes and, and uh, clean up a little bit. And he looks at her and says, okay, if I, can, if I have to. And she gets all upset. She says, I don't want you to be a martyr. So let's try to figure this out together. The first two cases, not the employer or the teacher, really spent that much time taking into consideration the person's feelings, and certainly the person's attitude is not gonna change the outcome. Why is it in both cases that I told you over here, the father and the, and the case of the spouse, why is it that their, their attitude is so important? So I'll give you a possible answer. You see, when a, when a son is told by his father, the outside looks terrible, and I want you to do this, the son hears it, I have to do this for dad. Dad is saying it, you're not doing it for me, you're doing it for the house. You live in this house. You're a member of this household, so you don't do me a favor, do yourself a favor. And after all, Tell me something, do you want to have mice and rodents? Do you want to live in a dilapidated, horrible house? But the kid doesn't, doesn't act as if it's for him. It, he's doing it only for someone else. And that's upsetting to the father because to a certain extent, it shows a lack of gratitude of living in the house. The same thing about the wife. Okay, I'll do it if you, if you need me to. She's looking at him. What do you mean if I need you to? You need to. I am your wife. You want me to be healthy? You want me to be attractive? You want to have a, a happy household? So why do I have to beg you? Don't do me a favor. This is for us. This is our favor. This is our house. And when he makes a big sigh and a big spiel about how he's going to help his wife, she thinks, you know, he's really not grateful at all for me or for what I do. The issue over here is gratitude, actually. Attitude does not really matter that much when the focus is on the job, the mission. But when the job and the mission is connected to a sense of Gratitude, being grateful for, given, for having been given this opportunity 
a lack of gratitude actually grates. And perhaps this might explain something very interesting in this week's Torah portion, which is in um, chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, well, when God tells the Jewish people that if they're not going to be loyal to him, he's going to punish them, one of the, the aspects of this loyalty that the Almighty says is, because you did not serve me with joy and with the fullness of heart. And you ask yourself, okay, if, I, if the Jewish people don't keep kosher or the Sabbath, we could perhaps understand the displeasure of God. But if we didn't do it with a smile... That's why God is upset. But the point of it is, it's not we didn't do it with a smile. It's the idea of looking at what God gave us is a burden. It's not a burden. It's a privilege. And of course, we serve God. But because God is good, every aspect of divine worship brings a blessing. Brings a blessing to the person doing it. So in this particular case, God says, look, it's bad enough you're not doing the mitzvahs, but even when you do a mitzvah and you're doing it grudgingly, what happens at that moment is you're, you're implying that I am not a good God and that I just want to hurt you and burden you, and that's not the purpose. In truth, my friends, uh, the uncomfortable feeling, and I've used that word often the last couple of weeks, that many of us are discomforted and we're a little bit out of our comfort zone. You could see it in one or two ways. You could see it as a terrible burden, for many it is, and a terrible injustice in your eyes. And if you were God, you would certainly know what to do. Or you could actually suggest something altogether different. And that is, there is a fundamental change that's taking place over here. That fundamental change, we don't yet see. It's clearly things are moving, things are changing. And this change is without a doubt for the better. We should not consider it something of a burden we could, at best, we should consider it a challenge. How can we serve God with joy at a time when it's uncomfortable? How can we see blessings when there seems to be a lot of issues which are the opposite of blessings? And there's always the idea of going back to the basics. I thank God for life, I thank God for family, I thank God for health, I thank God for the country I live in, I thank God for the Torah he gave us, on and on and on. So as we prepare for the new year, which will be a year of great blessing, we already in the last days of the year 5,780 in the Jewish calendar, we are already, um, in a sense, smelling the fragrance of a beautiful garden that will emerge from this particular time. Shalom, and I wish you a very happy and healthy New Year.